next topic is on the staining methods. Okay, first of all, what is staining? Staining is a technique that is used to enhance the contrast in the samples generally at the microscopic level. The structural details of bacteria cannot be seen under the light microscope. So due to the lack of the contrast, it is necessary for us to stain a bacteria for better visualization. This is the reason why staining and staining techniques play a major role. Clear? Then what is the stain? Stain is a dye used to color the living or dead organisms. Or else it can also be said as a stain is a substance that adheres to the cell, giving the cell color and presence of this color gives the cells a significant contrast. That is, it gives a clear visibility. So that is why an organism is stained using different kinds of dyes and then it can be observed microscopically. Okay, different stains have different affinities for different organisms and it is used for giving specific parts of organisms. So this is about the staining and the stain. Okay, now we, you might have it out. Why should we stain a bacteria? Yes, why should we stain? You might have this question. We raise this doubt because since bacteria are transparent and colorless, they would be visible. They wouldn't be visible uh, with our naked eye. So that is that invisible to our naked eye. And if observed under the microscope, they cannot be seen. So different kinds of staining methods are used to make these cells visible under the microscope. Okay, here is the answer. Bacteria have nearly same refractive index as that of water. Therefore, when observed under microscope, they are opaque. So this is the reason why we must stain the bacteria. And there are various kinds of uh, commonly used staining techniques like simple staining methods, negative staining methods, impregnation methods, differential staining methods, so on and so forth. So depending upon the uh, morphology or the, depending upon the kinds of uh, the organism used, uh, the different kinds of staining techniques can be carried out. Okay. Now, let's talk about the materials that are required for staining. So, what are the common materials that are required for carrying out any kinds of a staining methods is, firstly, we need to have uh, the glass lights. So, as shown in the image, glass lights must be uh, clean and grease free. And then we need to have culture plates or tubes. So, these are the culture plates or tubes that contains the organism growing. And then the inoculation loop. So certain times inoculation loop or inoculation needles can also be used. And then water. So this is the wash bottle that is used for uh, washing the uh, specimens or washing the stains. And then we need to have the staining kit with different kinds of uh, uh, stains. So this is the staining kit showing having a dropper, cover slip, glass lights and different kinds of uh, uh, stains. So depending upon the staining method carried out, there will be different kinds of stains like saffron, crystal violet, iodine, uh, alcohol, so on and so forth. Okay. And then Bunsen burner. Well, this is the Bunsen burner. And then a microscope. So this is the microscope. And this is the staining kit uh, tray where we place this glass light and then we can uh, uh, perform the staining in this tray. So apart from all these, we might also uh, require the uh, uh, stay, uh, what do we say? For observing under oil immersion lens, we need some oil and also uh, we can use certain kinds of the blotting papers. So excess stain can be removed by using this blotting paper. So these are the basic requirements that are uh, required for staining any kinds of uh, uh, organisms. Clear? Yes. Now let's talk about the preparations. So what are all different kinds of uh, preparations that we must carry out before uh, carrying the staining is firstly, there are three important steps. First one is preparation of smear. Then the next one is fixation. So when you heard about the term fixation, fixation can be done by two ways, either heat fixation or by chemical fixation. Clear. And then the third step is obviously staining. Okay, so I repeat. First is preparation of smear. Second one is fixation. And third one is staining. Okay, now let's talk each one in detail. Firstly, let's talk about the preparation of smear. So how is the preparation of smear done? First, what is the importance of fixing the smear? We'll discuss that later. Firstly, let's talk about the procedure of preparation of smear. So take, uh, place the liquid on the slide. Firstly, take the liquid drop, place it on the slide, and then add the microbes to the liquid and spread over the slide. A dry or heat gentle. When dry, briefly heat fix the cells to slide. So this is how slide preparation is done. So, okay, let me tell what is the importance of fixation of smears. Firstly, to fix the smears, it kills the organisms. And then uh, 
it adheres the organisms to the slide and also it can alter the organism so that they can readily and easily accept the stains or ties. So that is why the fixation step is important. Okay, is it clear? So this is how the preparation of smear can be done. And then, so let me tell you in detail how this preparation can be done. Firstly, you need to prepare the smear by uh, taking from the liquid or solid cultures. I shown in the previous uh, uh, slides, you have seen the uh, solid uh, agar plate that, that contains the bacterial colony growth or the liquid broth that contains the organism growing in that. So, okay, so smear can be made from the liquid or solid cultures or from a clinical specimen. So, either way, the smear can be taken. Okay, can be prepared. Then, it is prepared by placing a loop full of a culture on a clean, greasy side. So, we can see this. So, pick up the colony or the, uh, take the uh, drop of the culture from the respective uh, culture plates or uh, tubes and then place a loop full of culture as shown in the image onto the clean, greasy side with the help of this inoculation loop. Okay, so before picking up the culture, what we must do, pass this inoculation loop onto the Bunsen burner so that if uh, any kinds of impurities or any kinds of contaminants if they are present on the inoculation loop or any other organisms, so in order to avoid contamination, we just pass the inoculation loop. That is, we sterilize the inoculation loop by passing it onto the Bunsen burner, then wait for a few minutes, a few seconds, then pick up the colonies and place that onto the clean glass layer. Okay. Once you have placed this, next what do we do? We need to spread the culture on the glass slide so as to form a thin film. So this is the second step. So once we have taken the culture, place a drop and then mix it thoroughly and make a thin film. Okay, once the thin film is made, now what happens? This film is uh, allowed to air dry or certain kinds of uh, uh, process where heat fixation is done depending upon the procedure and the specimen used. Uh, this can be done. In certain kinds of procedure, heat fixation step cannot be used. Only just air drying should be done. And then next fixation must be done. Okay, the second step is how do we fix the smear? Fixation. So what is the principle? Fixation generally kills the microorganisms and attaches them to the slide. So this is the important part that is. So whatever the culture that we are added onto the slide that contains the organism, they attaches to the slide. That is the idea. And this prevents washing away of microorganisms in further steps of staining procedure. So this is why fixation is important. Okay. And then um, the two fixation methods that are used for microbial cells are, as told earlier, heat fixation and chemical fixation. Firstly, let's talk about the heat fixation method. So heat fixation, this is a method where the slide is gently passed by passing through the flame. So once we have uh, taken the uh, glass slide and we have added the culture, just pass it gently over the Bunsen burner flame. And then heat fixation will preserve the overall morphology of the cell without destroying the internal structures. That is why heat fixation is done. Okay. And the second type of fixation is the chemical fixation method. Generally, these are carried out for the uh, blood specimens and all. Okay. It involves the use of chemical fixator to protect the fine cellular structures of the delicate organisms. Certain organisms have very fine cellular structures. When they are passed through the flame, what happens? All their internal structures get uh, um, destroyed. So in order to avoid that, we use certain kinds of chemical fixatives. So some of them are the ethanol, acetic acid, formaldehyde, glutaraldehyde, mercury chloride, so on and so forth. So these are the common chemical fixatives used. Okay, is it clear? So this is about the second step that is fixation. Either heat fixation or chemical fixation can be done. And the third part is staining them. So let's talk about the bacterial staining methods. So we have here three important bacterial staining methods. One is the simple staining methods. Second one is the differential staining method. And the third one is the special staining method. Now let's discuss each one in detail. Okay. So this is the flowchart of showing the different kinds of uh, uh, the staining methods. Now, uh, and I'll be discussing each of the staining methods in the further slides. Firstly, staining methods are categorized into three ways. First one is the simple staining method. Next is the differential staining method and special staining methods. Okay, so the simple staining methods are used for the examination of shape, size and the arrangement of the bacterial cells. And the differential staining methods are used for differentiating different groups of bacteria. And the special stains are used for visualizing the bacterial external and internal structures. Is it clear? So three things, simple, different and special. 
further this differential staining techniques are divided into two uh, parts first well known one is the gram staining method so we all know the gram staining method was discovered by sir hans gram and then it is used to distinguish between the gram positive and gram negative organisms and the second important method is the acid fast food staining which is also known as zeil nielsen staining discovered by zeil and nielsen scientists so this is used for distinguishing acid fast bacteria generally like mycobacterium species from the non acid fast bacteria clear and then when talking about the special staining methods so special staining methods again they are categorized into endospore staining flagella staining capsula staining and metachromic staining when we talk about endospore staining they demonstrate the spore structure of bacteria for example shapofiter method is a most commonly used method and the flagella staining they demonstrate the presence and arrangement of flagella for example uh, the silver nitrate staining method can be carried out and the capsular staining it demonstrate the presence of capsule surrounding the cells using the nigrosin stain okay and the final one is the metachromic staining method that is used for uh, demonstrating the presence of granules that is really the metachromic granules are present or not and the albert stain uh, is the most important widely used stain for uh, checking the metachromic i mean specialized staining technique so this is about the uh, flow chart of different methods of uh, staining methods carried out depending on different organisms okay now let's talk about the staining methods okay positive staining and negative staining when we talk about positive staining these are actual cells that are themselves colored and appear in clear background okay so positive staining is categorized into simple staining and differential staining okay so i repeat what is positive staining in positive staining where the actual cells are themselves colored and they appear in the clear background so simple stain is a stain which provides color contrast but it gives the same color to all the bacteria and cells clear for example lawless methylene blue polychrome methylene blue diluted uh, carbol pastin so all of these are some of the important simple stains used methods and the differential staining a stain which imparts different colors to different bacteria is called as differential stain which contains more than one stain okay is it clear in simple stain we use only single dye and the organism gets the color and then uh, using uh, whatever the dye we use that color gets imparted to the organism whereas in differential staining that stain imparts different colors to different bacteria that is for example if we take gram staining uh, purple color and red color so based on the gram positive and gram negative nature they can be differentiated into gram positive and gram negative other one is the zeil nielsen stain where that is the acid fast staining where the acid fast bacteria generally they uh, stain with red in color and the non acid fast bacteria stain blue in color apart from this we also have other special staining methods like albert stain and so on okay this is about the positive staining now let's talk about the negative staining so what is this negative staining negative staining where the cells remain uncolored that is they remain clear no color can be seen and the background is colored to create a contrast to aid in the better visualization of image is it clear so negative staining what it does so the organism remains colorless but the background gets stained so this is how uh, we can clearly differentiate between the organism and the uh, stain okay so the two important uh, negative stainly uh, staining for you carrying out the negative staining uh, used dyes are nigrosin or indium clear okay now let's talk about the simple staining method simple staining methods so simple stain can be used as a quick and easy way to determine the cell shape size and arrangement of the bacteria okay since the surface of most bacterial cells and cytoplasm are negatively charged these positively charged stains are there readily to the cell surface is it clear about the statements see what it is told generally the surface of the bacterial cells and the cytoplasm are mostly negatively charged so when we add this positively charged dye what happens the stains can be taken that is when positive and negative charges uh, get together they adhere to the cell surface and then the uh, dye can be taken out so okay after staining what happens the bacterial morphology that is the shape size arrangement all of these can be seen clearly so this is about the simple staining method let's see how the procedure is carried out first we make a thin smear on the side so i have explained how the smear is made in the previous slides and then heat fix the smear by just passing the slide two to three times gently over the bunsen burner flame with the smear side up and then 
Pour lawless methylene blue over the smear. Allow it to stand for three minutes. Later, wash the stained smear with water. A dry it. Now observe the smear first under low power, that is 10x. Objective lens. Then observe it under high power, that is 45x or 40x. Okay. Then later, once uh, you have got the clarity, then uh, add this oil immersion lens onto the glass slide. Then fix the 100x uh, uh, lens. Observe it under the oil immersion lens by just touching the slide and the lens to the adjusting it and observing the observation okay observe the presence of organisms and also the cellular content of the sample so this is the pictorial form of how the uh, simple staining is carried out so spread the culture in the film and then dry it and then heat fix that is pass the slide through the uh, flame and then uh, flood the slide with the stain then rinse it with water obviously then observe it under oil immersion so this is how uh, the steps are carried out and the organism can be seen so this is the microscopic observation. So when we use the different kinds of stain, these are the uh, pink, uh, sorry, purple colored foci observed under the microscope. And these are the bacilli, pink colored bacilli seen under the microscope. Okay. So depending upon the stain we used, the different colors can be imparted to different kinds of organisms. Is it clear? So this is about the simple staining method. Now let's talk about the differences between simple staining method and differential staining method. So simple staining method uses only one stain, whereas differential staining method uses more than one stain. It imparts only one color to all the bacterial cells. It imparts two or more different colors to bacterial cells. We'll discuss about the differential staining in the next slides, but this is just the difference between the simple and differential staining. Okay, it reveals the size, shape and arrangement of bacterial cells. This also reveals the size, shape and arrangement. In addition to this, it differentiates between two groups of bacteria. Examples of simple stain includes the methylene blue staining method and the examples of differential staining includes the gram staining method and the acid first staining. So these are the two uh, important differential staining methods that are carried out mostly for differentiating the organisms. Okay, now let's get into the differential staining method. The most important well-known differential staining method is the gram staining method. So gram staining is a very important preliminary step in initial characterization as well as the classification of bacteria clear and then the gram positive cells generally have more acidic protoplasm and then uh, the peptidoglycan of the gram positive bacteria are generally thick and that is why uh, they retain the diiodine complex okay first let's talk about the introduction and get into the details gram staining is most widely used uh, differentiating uh, staining in the microbiology and then gram staining differentiates the bacteria into two groups that is gram positive bacteria and then gram negative bacteria. So from where did this uh, gram staining technique exist? Is? Sir Hans Johann Gram has devised the, okay, he's a board, the Danish physician who has devised this while working in Berlin in 1883. So the gram stain was devised by this uh, gram that is Hans Christian Johann Gram has discovered this gram staining method while he was working in Berlin and then he later published his procedure in 1884. At this time, Dr. Graham was studying the lung tissue sections from the patient who has died of this pneumonia. So the image shown is the uh, Christian Graham's image. So he is the person who led to the discovery of this gram staining technique. Clear? Yes. Now let's get into the important part that is the principle of gram staining method. So what is the principle involved? So I said earlier, what happens? The gram positive cells are more acidic protoplasm. So as they have more acidic protoplasm, the peptidoglycan of gram positive bacteria is very thick as we all know. And thus they are able to retain this diiodine complex. Okay. When the bacteria is stained with the primary stain crystal violet and fixed by modern, some of the bacteria are able to retain this primary stain. And some are decolorized by alcohol. So this is where the gram positive and gram negative can be differentiated. Okay. So the cell phones of gram positive bacteria have a very thick layer of protein sugar complexes called as that is peptidoglycan layer. So as the gram positive cell walls carry out this uh, thick peptidoglycan layer and they have very low content of the liquid. So the decolorizing the cells cause the thick cell wall to dehydrate and shrink. So this is what happens. So that is once we have uh, uh, taken the smear, once we have heat fixed them and we added the crystal violet and washed, what happens? Because of the presence of the thick peptidoglycan layer, 
when we add the decal riser what happens is dehydration and shrinking of the cells occurs which closes the pores in the cell wall and this prevents the stain from exiting the cells that is all the gram positive cells take up this uh, crystal violet dye and then uh, they do not uh, when they are washed with this uh, decal riser or acid alcohol they do not get washed out okay only thing is the cells get dehydrated and shrink clear so the ethanol cannot remove the crystal violet iodine complex that is bound to the thick layer of hydroglycan of gram positive bacteria then hence that is why it appears as a purple or violet in color so this is about the gram positive cells when we talk about gram negative cells it is just quite opposite gram negative cells have very thin peptidoglycan layer and they have more lipid content and that makes the bacteria permeable to the secondary staining dye that is the Uh, saffron that is after decolorization with organic solvents what happens the crystal violet iodine complex uh, uh, gets out see as shown here in case of gram negative bacteria cell walls also take up crystal violet iodine complex but due to the thin layer of peptidoglycan and thick outer layer which is formed of lipids the cv iodine complex gets washed off is it clear so because of this thin peptidoglycan all these uh, crystal violet iodine complex washed off and when we counter stain it with the saffron what happens the cells gram negative cells take up this okay so when they are exposed to alcohol decal riser dissolves the lipids in the cell wall which allows the crystal violet iodine complex to leach out of the cells and when stained with saffron it they take up the stain and they appear as the red or pink in color so this is how uh, this is what takes place that is in case of gram positive i repeat in case of gram positive cells what happens the cell shrinkage and dehydration occurs because they have thick peptidoglycan layer they take up the crystal violet um, iodine complex so we add the decal riser they do not get decal riser that is a uh, crystal violet iodine complex remains as such and the bacteria stains a uh, purple or violet in color whereas because of the uh, more lipid content and less uh, um, what do we say the peptidoglycan layer in gram negative cell walls uh, even after decal riserization what happens the crystal violet iodine complex leaks out they comes out and then when we stain with the counter stain they get uh, stained with this red or pink in color so this is about the main principle involved behind this gram staining method okay so this is the image showing uh, the difference between the gram positive and gram negative layer so we can see the plasma membrane is present it has a periplasmic place and it has a very thick peptidoglycan layer okay when we see in case of gram negative so we can see it has a plasma membrane it has a periplasmic space and it has a peptidoglycan layer but this peptidoglycan layer is very thin so when you compare this gram positive and gram negative we can see very thin peptidoglycan layer present in gram negative bacteria and it has an extra outer membrane so this outer membrane contains lipopolysaccharide that is the lipopolysaccharide that contains high content of the lipid and it is protein rich so that is why uh, the gram positive and gram negative Uh, organisms stain differently gram positive take up the crystal violet and gram negative take up this counter stain that is saffron in and they stain respectively into uh, violet and then red colors clear yes okay now let's talk about the procedure before getting into procedure we must know about the uh, what do we say the reagents that are used for carrying out this experiment so what are the reagents so the reagents are generally the crystal violet that acts as the primary stain and then iodine that acts as mordant decal riser obviously is the 95% alcohol or acetone and saffron is the counter stain okay so um, so what happens now is how the procedure is carried out we'll discuss now so this is the uh, reagents used for carrying out so firstly we need to take the smear once you have taken the smear dry the smear okay and then heat fix it that is the first step after heat fixing add the crystal violet leave it for about a minute and then now add the mordant then add the um, wash it then add gram iodine decolorize it by adding alcohol 95% alcohol then you need to wash it out then wait for uh, 30 seconds and then add the stain that is counter stain that is the uh, saffron in once you add the saffron in then you must wait for about 1 minute and then again water wash it once you have water washed it blot dry if any excess stain is present and then check for observe it under the a uh, microscope and check for either gram positive or gram negative bacteria so the observations can be the gram positive bacteria as shown here are purple in color they can be either cocci or they can be bacilli so here 
the gram positive foci and gram positive bacilli are shown here and when we talk about gram negative foci they generally appear red in color or pink in color and the gram negative foci appears uh, this is the gram negative foci and this is the gram negative bacilli so depending upon the organism different uh, either foci or bacteria bacilli can also be seen so this is how the experiment is carried out so i repeat the first step is first you need to make the smear once you make the smear heat fix the smear then once you have heat fixed you need to add the primary stain that is uh, crystal violet wait for about a minute and then wash it now add a mordant that is the iodine gram iodine once you added the gram iodine now you need to wait again for certain uh, minutes a minute or a half minute then you need to decolorize it by adding the alcohol that is 95% alcohol once you added alcohol do not add any kinds of water then wait for some time and then add the secondary stain that is the counter stain that is the uh, safranin and depending upon the organism uh, different kinds of organisms like gram positive organisms take up crystal violet uh, iodine complex and then gram negative organisms take up the safranin and they get stained when you observe under the microscope both the uh, gram positive and gram negative organisms can be seen clearly and they can be differentiated okay clear yes now let's talk about the interpretation of result as said many times so the gram positive organisms are stained purple in color so we can see these are the gram positive foci and these are the gram negative bacilli that are pink or reddish in color that are stained and observed microscopically under microscope now let's talk about the next important staining method that is negative staining method okay so the negative staining method okay before getting to negative staining method is it essential for identification of bacteria yes it is always essential to identify the bacteria for their growth requirements for their susceptibility to antibiotics and their pathogenicity this is why uh, the applications of gram staining are very important so i repeat they are required for the growth requirements susceptibility to antibiotics and pathogens to check all of these identification of bacteria is very essential now let's talk about the uh, negative staining method so the main purpose of the negative staining method is to study the morphological shape size their arrangement of the bacteria cells that is difficult to stain for example spirilla so when you take the spirilla all of uh, that can be seen by negative staining okay so it also it can also be used to stain cells uh, that are too delicate to be heat fixed and it is used to give viruses bacteria so when you hear about the negative staining and spirilla so we can see the spirillum uh, that is the background gets stained by the negative stain and the transparent uh, spirilla can be seen microscopically okay and then the biological membrane structures proteins are protein aggregates which all have a low electron scattering power so these are the important uh, points that are included under negative staining so i repeat it is used for studying the morphology of the organism arrangement and then uh, it can also be used to stain the cells that are generally are uh, delicate that is that are resistant to heat fixing that is if we heat fix them the organism gets a uh, uh, dye and then it is also used for viewing viruses bacteria bacterial flagella biological membrane so on and so forth. okay now let's talk about the principle involved in the um, negative staining method so negative staining requires an acidic dye known as the indian ink or negrosin so these are the dyes that are used for staining the negative uh, staining the organism by the negative staining method okay so this means that the stain readily by gives up a hydrogen ion and chromophore of the dye becomes negatively charged since the surface of most bacterial cells are negatively charged the surface repels the stain so that is why so these negative dyes negative staining dyes are used okay okay so the glass of the slide will stain but the bacterial cells will not so the bacteria will show up a clear spots against dark background so is it clear so this is the principle involved that is the main principle is uh, the stain readily takes up the hydrogen ion that is proton and the chromophore of the dye becomes negatively charged since the bacterial surface are cells are mostly negatively charged the cell surface repels the stain and the background gets stained with the uh, indian ink or the negrosin and the organism appears to be clear so this is the principle involved in the negative staining now let's talk about the procedure how it is carried out to carry out the negative staining procedure firstly we need to take a clean grease free slide and then prepare a smear by using a sterile inoculating loop air dry the smear and then there is no heat fixation step that is there is no requirement of uh, any heat so so first take a clean grease free slide add a drop of negrosin to one end of the slide and then to that with the help of inoculating loop 
just add a drop of an inoculum to it mix it and then prepare a thin film of a stain on the slide by using the edge of another slide so i have shown in the image so once you have taken the uh, negrosin and once you have added the uh, inoculum with the help of inoculating loop with the take another clean grease free slide that is sterile and now mix it with the help of slide and then drag the slide in opposite direction and that is in generally in 45 degrees angle so i shown here so with the help of another slide just drag the slide and then make a thin uniform film now allow the film to air dry and absorb under oil emulsion so this is how uh, the uh, by using negative staining technique can be carried out by using negrosin or indumin is it clear so i repeat first add the negrosin add the inoculum then mix it with the help of uh, the glass slide then just drag the um, for so, uh, inoculum that is the with the help of another slide and then let it air dry observe it under the microscope under oil immersion yes and then so these are the observation uh, seen this is the result seen so these are the negatively stained foci seen under the dark background and the clear negatively stained foci can be seen by negative staining methods clear now let's talk about the next important differential staining method that is the zeal nelson staining method so it is a differential staining technique which was first discovered by paul ehrlich and later modified by zeal and nelson so this method is now called as zeal nelson staining method so the main aim of the staining is to differentiate the bacteria into acid fast group and non acid fast group okay so let's talk about the principle involved behind the zeal nelson staining so acid fastness is not a property of lipids alone that is why it is also depends on the integrity of the cell wall so that is why acid fast bacteria like mycobacteria contain mycolic acids in their outer membrane making the cells waxy and resistant to staining with aqueous based stains such as the gram stains so that is why it is different from that of the gram staining method clear and then so when you talk about the primary stain that is the carbol fustian the primary stain is carbol fustian is applied to the cells and the heat and phenol are used to allow the stain to penetrate into waxy surface of acid fast microorganisms because they have a mycolic acid layer present that is a thick waxy coating layer present in their cell walls so it is difficult for staining with regular stains or the gram staining method so that is why we use a zeal nelson staining where they have the primary stain as a carbol fustian and uh, phenol can also be used in order to uh, allow the stain to penetrate into the waxy surface and make the organism acid fast okay clear so this is about the principle now so the excess stain is removed with treatment by acid alcohol so what is this acid alcohol generally ethanol and hydrochloric acid are used as the acid alcohol okay now a secondary stain that is methylene blue is used and this is applied uh, to the cells okay now for noting it down we have a note color blind workers are advised to use picric acid solution which yields a yellow background so it, there is a small difference uh, for those color blind people okay now let's talk about the reagents and get into the procedure so what are the reagents as a primary dye is the carbol fustian that is a basic fustian that contains phenol and decolorizer sulfuric acid generally 20% h2so4 is used for um, sulfuric acid is used and then acid alcohol can be used then counter stain is methylene blue or malachite green so any one of the dyes can be used for carrying out the zeal nelson stain so this is the image of the uh, cell wall of the organisms uh, having the my uh, myco membrane that has glycolipids they have mycolic acids arabinoglycan layer and peptidoglycan layer so because of these mycolic acids uh, uh, they have a thick waxy coating layer and they generally differ from other organisms that is other bacteria okay so let's get into the procedure of zeal nelson staining firstly you need to take a clean grease free slide and then you need to prepare a smear take an inoculum from the inoculum just add a um, loop full of the smear or just pick up the colony and place it onto the uh, grease free slide now flood it with the carbol fustian so primary dye so flood it with carbol fustian steam the smear so here is an important part that is steaming so you need to have a steamer so and then steam that once you flooded with the carbol fustian steam the um, uh, slide and then flood the slide with acid alcohol so what all this acid alcohol contains either acid alcohol or 20% h2so4 can be used now wash it then add flood it with the methylene blue right that is the secondary stain and then 
A drive the light and observe it under the microscope. So when you observe under the microscope, what do we do? We need to differentiate between acid fast and non acid fast organisms. Okay. So this is an another image of uh, carrying out the uh, the procedure. So firstly, application of primary stain that is carbon first stain to the um, specimen or the culture plate. Uh, once you made the smear, add the carbon first stain, then steam it. So steam it on a water bath. Uh, sorry, uh, by using the steamer, just steam it. For about a, a minute. Then, after application of the mordant, now apply acid alcohol that is decolorizer that acts as a decolorizer. Then later you need to apply methylene blue that is a counter stain. So the methylene blue is taken by the non-acid first organisms and they are stained blue in color. And the acid first organisms obviously they take the carbon first stain and they get stained with red in color. So this is the microscopic observation where the organism is stained with red in color. So this is the uh, acid first bacilli. Acid fast organisms. So the most important example is the well-known example is the mycobacterium species that generally appear or appear pink or red in color, and the non-acid fast organisms appear blue in color. In addition to this, the background material should also stain with blue in color. So the non-acid fast organism as well as the background, both of them get stained with blue in color, whereas the acid fast organisms get stained with pink or red in color. So depending on the uh, that generally mostly the carbon first stain is used. Clear. Now let's talk about the endospore staining. So what are these endospores? Let's talk about the spores. Spores are generally normally impervious. So what does this impervious means? It is nothing but they are unable to get affected. So they are unable to get affected to stain under the light microscope. So the endospore stain is differential stain which selectively stains the bacterial endospores. So endospores have a high refractive index that is they have indicative of high protein content because of their high protein content they are impervious to stain. So we need this specialized endospore staining methods carried out to stain these organisms that contain endospores. Okay, so the main purpose of endospore staining is to differentiate bacterial spores from other vegetative cells and differentiate spores from spore formers from non-spore formers. So this is the important part. So some contain spores, some do not contain spores. So in order to differentiate between the spore formers and non-spore formers, this kinds of staining must be carried out. Okay. So the bacterial endospores are metabolically inactive, highly resistant structures that are produced by certain bacteria which acts as a defensive strategy against unfavorable conditions. But during favorable conditions, they can germinate and they can uh, cause the further condition. That is, they can get converted to the... Uh, the bacteria can remain in suspended state until conditions become favorable and they can germinate and return to the vegetative state. Clear? So that is, so they remain in unfavorable conditions, but once their chances favor them and all the conditions become favorable, they germinate and again convert them back into the vegetative state. This is about the endospore. Okay. So sharper Fulton method is the most uh, important, um, well-known method that is carried out for staining these endospores. So in the sharper Fulton method, the primary stain used is the malachite green. So this is forged into the spores by steaming the bacterial emulsion. So that is similar to that of the ZN stain. And then the malachite green is a water soluble and a low affinity for cellular material. So vegetative cells may be decolorized with water. And then talking about the counter stain that is saffronin. Saffronin is applied as counter stain as the cells have to be. So any cells which have been decolorized take up this saffronin. Okay, this is the principle involved. And then at the end of the staining process, the vegetative cells will be pink and, and the endospores will be dark green. The spores may be located in the middle of the cell, end of the cell, in between. Or arrangement can be anything depending on the uh, organism. And the spore shape may also be for diagnostic use, spores may be either spherical or elliptical. So this is about the principle of endospore, that is shaft of pulp and staining. Now let's talk about the reagents used and the procedure. The reagents used are the primary stain is malachite green and water acts as the decolorizer. Saffronin is the counter stain that is used. And the equipments are glass slide, inoculating loop, Bunsen burner, and regularly microscope. Uh, all of this can be used. Okay. So how is the procedure carried out? Firstly, you need to take an oil-free or grease-free glass light and then prepare a smear, obviously, then air dry the smear and now you need to heat fix that is by steaming it and then place a blotting paper onto the, uh, the smear that you have prepared, place a blotting paper 
Once you place the blotting paper, now saturate the paper with malachite green. So what does that mean? So when you place the blotting paper onto the slide and place the entire setup onto the steaming process, that is repeat the step for three to five times. Keep on adding the malachite green drop by drop. Once it gets saturated, then again add the malachite green and then moisturize the paper by applying the heat. Remove the paper. Now allow it to cool. Keep it aside. Wash it under running water and then apply saffron in. That is apply the counter stain. Wait for two to three minutes. Wash it under running tap water. Now dry the slide and absorb it under microscope. This is how the endospore staining procedure must be carried out. So I repeat. First, you need to take the slide, add the smear and then you need to air dry it. Then uh, you need to heat fix. So place the plotting. How do you do it? Place a blotting paper and keep on adding the malachite green. Saturate it by adding malachite green. And then after certain time, remove the uh, blotting paper and then uh, place the slide aside. After some time, wash it with water. Once you have washed it with running water, then add the counter stain that is saffron in. Wait for two to three minutes. Then again, wash it with the uh, water, running tap water. And then now remove the excess water stain that is present with the help of blotting paper. And then observe it under microscope. So this is the procedure carried out. So you can see here another pictorial form: application of malachite green, then application of heat that acts that is a modern, then application of water. So here no special decolorizers are used except water. So water acts as the decolorizer, and so that um, the non uh, uh, the non-sporing forms can get uh, uh, washed out, and then that is the stain gets the malachite green gets washed out, and they take up the counter stain that is saffron. Okay, so this is the uh, result of the microscopic image showing the endospores uh, getting stained with a bright green in color and all the vegetative uh, cells stained brownish red or pink in color. So this is the image. So these are the endospores that are green in color. So these are all the endospores that are present green in color. And these are the pinkish or brownish red uh, vegetative cells that are present. Okay, so this is the image shown how the smear is added, how the blotting paper is put on it and how this... Uh, uh, how the steaming is done and later washing and then counter staining is done and this is how uh, the uh, result can be seen that is the spores can be located either in the middle or at the end or they can be present towards one end or they can be present in the center or they can be located in the middle so this is how the spores can be located and they can either be spherical or elliptical in shape all of this can be our diagnostic use so this is about the endospore staining is it clear yes now let's get into the next important part that is the Albert staining method. So another specialized staining method is the Albert staining method. So this method is used to demonstrate the more metachromatic granules of Corini bacterium diphtheria. So mostly this Albert staining technique is carried out to identify the Corini bacterium diphtheria organism that contains the metachromic granules. Okay. So the composition of Albert stain is it has two Albert one solution and Albert two solutions. So the Albert 1 solution contains the toluidine blue, malachite green, glacial acetic acid, alcohol, distilled water. Albert 2 contains the iodine in potassium iodide. Okay, now let's see how the procedure is carried out. Firstly, you need to prepare a smear on a clean grease free slide and air dry it, fix it, heat, heat fix the smear, treat the smears with Albert stain for about 3 minutes and then drain the excess stain and flood it with the Albert. So firstly, you need to add the Albert's 1 stain. Then wait for about three minutes, drain excess stain, flood it with the Albert's 2 solution, that is iodine. Then wait for about two minutes. After two minutes, wash it with water, air dry it, observe it under oil emulsion lens. Okay, so this is how the results can be interpreted. The class uh, Corny bacterium diphtheria appears as green colored bacilli. So we can see the green colored bacilli with bluish black metachromic granules. So these are somewhat like a drumstick shaped. So, okay, and the bacilli are arranged in cuneiform pattern. So, this is how the Clostridium bacteria, Clostridium diphtheria, Corny, sorry, Corny bacterium diphtheria organism can be appeared once we are stained with the Albert staining method. Okay, clear. So, this is the microscopic image. So, these are the bluish black, these are the metachromic granules, and these are the green colored bacilli of the organism. Yes, okay. Now, let's talk about the other important uh, um, staining, specialized staining method that is flagella staining method. So we are talking about the leaf sun staining method. Okay, first take a slant of flagella cell culture. So uh, it must be the somewhat old flagella culture must be taken 
and then to the slant culture you need to add drop by drop of sterile distilled water must be added with the help of a dropper and then once you added the water you need to wait for about 20 minutes okay so once you have waited for about 20 minutes then take a drop of suspension and add on a slide kept in slanting position okay so take a clean grizzly slide and then with the help of inoculating loop or a dropper take a drop of it and place to one end of the uh, glass slide once you have placed to one end of the glass slide now what you must do aerate the smear and here also no heat fixation treatment is given so do not heat fix the smear and then now flood the slide with deep sun stain and gentle water wash is needed clear so take the smear that is add the uh, smear onto one end of the slide with uh, add a drop of water then just uh, uh, keep the slide in a slanting position then flood it with this leaf sun stain and then gently after some time wash it with the water and treat the slide with 1% methylene blue for a minute that is the counter stain and wash it with water now observe once you carry out the procedure observe it under the oil immersion lens that is microscope so this is the microscopic image of the um, flagella staining so these are the bacterial flagella under microscope different kinds of uh, peritrichus lophotrichus or that is the arrangement of bacterial uh, flagella can be seen generally the flagella are fine thread like structures as we all know flagella are the locomotory structures that is they help in the movement of organism because they have these very thin and delicate uh, fine structures they require this kinds of specialized staining methods as they cannot be seen directly under the light microscope clear and the flagella appear as red in color and the bacteria appear blue in color so this is how the observation can be seen when we observe under the microscope now let's talk about the next uh, important uh, staining method that is the capsular staining method so what is this capsule a capsule is nothing but it is a gelatinous outer layer secreted by certain kinds of bacterial cells they help in surrounding and adhering to the cell wall that is they are nothing but the external structures that are possessed by certain kinds of bacteria so the capsule differs from slime layer but slime layer has a little affinity for basic dyes and hence it is not visible when we stain with the normal or the differential gram staining techniques or the gram staining smear okay so what is the principle involved behind it so capsule stain very poorly with the reagents used in simple staining method so that is why capsule staining depends on the method that we are used so we can either use his method anthony's method manwell's method or even indian ink method can be used so these are different uh, capsular staining methods a positive capsular staining requires a mordant and by counter staining with dyes like uh, crystal violet methylene blue bacterial cell wall takes up the dye and then the capsule appear colorless with stained cells again the background that is the uh, against the dark background the capsule appears colorless okay so this is the image of the showing okay uh, okay let's talk about the procedure of his method first you need to prepare a smear you need to air dry and do not heat fix okay okay so no more heat fixation must be done once you have prepared the smear then flood the smear with the crystal violet and wait for about 4 to 5 minutes then the rinse the slide with 20% copper sulfate solution later air the air dry the slide observe it under oil immersion lens so this is how the capsular staining is done by carrying out this his method okay and this are the microscopic images showing the organism uh, uh, covered by its uh, uh, colorless capsule and the organism gets stained depending on the so here crystal violet has been used so the violet color organism got stained with violet color okay now let's talk about the manuels method so how is this manuels method carried out firstly you need to take a drop of the suspension onto the slide and then you need to add a drop of 1% congo red solution so in previous this method we have taken the crystal violet and here we are taking a congo red solution spread it gently on the slide to make a, a proper smear and then allow it to air dry here also we do not uh, carry out any heat fixation step and then treat the smear with manuel stain for about 2 minutes so firstly we have taken the smear suspension and then we have added the congo red as primary stain then we have spread it we have allowed it to air dry and now we have treated it with the secondary stain that is the manuel stain and we have wait for about 2 minutes now drain the excess stain and air dry it observe under the oil immersion lens so once you have carried out this obviously you need to observe the result under the oil immersion lens microscope okay so this is how once you have done the capsule staining these are the image showing how the uh, capsules appear and how the background appears so these are the rods 
and this is the colorless capsule so this is the colorless capsule surrounding the uh, organism that is the bacteria and this is the image of the cryptococcus capsule seen as a halo by a uh, staining with indian ink staining so we can see this is the cryptococcus capsule colorless capsule and the organism is present and the background is green dark so on a dark background by using indian ink we can see the colorless capsule and the organism is green depending on the dye used so this is about the observation of these uh, capsular staining technique clear now let's talk about the another uh, important kinds of uh, now we have talked about different kinds of uh, staining techniques used for bacteria apart from bacteria even fungi can be stained so how do we stain this fungi so the stainless fungi there is specialized technique used that is the lactophenol cotton blue cotton wet mount blue preparation can be done so the lactophenol cotton blue staining method works on the principle of aiding the identification of fungal cell walls okay it is used for the demonstration of fungi fungal elements under the microscope so the fungi identified by this characteristic microscope morphology shape size arrangement the spores hyphae so on and so forth so all of these can be seen under the microscope once we have stained by using this lactophenol cotton blue technique okay so what is the principle involved behind so firstly uh, what all the contents are present is phenol it acts as disinfectant that is by killing any other organisms apart from fungi it kills if any kinds of uh, bacteria or any contaminants are present so this phenol acts as disinfectant and it removes all other living organisms and lactic acid it is generally used for preserving the fungal structures cotton blue to stain or give the color to the chitin because the fungal cell wall contains a, a chitin layer in their cell wall and other fungal structures to stain them we use this cotton blue so the stain will give the fungi a blue colored appearance with fungal spores and structures like hyphae okay now let's talk about the procedure so this is how observation on the microscope how is this carried out is firstly you need to take a drop of lactophenol cotton blue so add a drop of lactophenol cotton blue onto the clean bleach bleach slide so once you have added the cotton blue next what we must do we need to pick up a small colony fungal colony so suppose we have a plate of fungal colony suppose we take a pd a potato dextrose agar and there is an organism growing on it fungi growing on it with the help of a needle just to pick up a sterile needle just pick up a small part of the fungal colony from it and then place a, a, the fungal colony small car, drop of the lactophenol blue and then once we have picked the colony from the uh, needle from the uh, plate now place the picked up a, a fungi onto the lactophenol cotton blue dye okay once you have placed that now what we must do with the help of needle start teasing them okay so that is to mix up with the dye and the uh, the fungal colony that we have picked mix up both them tease them so once you have teased them properly with the needle then so once you have teased them now place a cover slip onto it carefully so with the help of the a needle itself place the cover slip on to the uh, dye containing the uh, fungal colony and then ensure that there are no air bubbles present so if air bubbles are present then uh, we might not get a clear picture about the uh, fungi that is present or the spores get mixed up with this air bubble okay so once you have placed the cover slip gently tap it or press it so if any cover if, uh, any bubbles are present then exit them out wipe off the excess stain with the help of the so if any excess stain comes out wipe off with the help of a blotting paper and then observe it under microscope so once you observe it under microscope so this is how uh, the organism appears so this is how the organism appears so it has taken the um, what do we say the lactophenol cotton blue and the spores hyphae all the parts can be seen clearly under the microscope so this is a specialized staining used for staining the fungi apart from bacteria even fungi gets fungi can be stained and they can be observed under microscope thank you